think we should introduce ourselves. We should what? Introduce ourselves to Dan. He oh, yeah, on the absolutely. <laughs> all right, you're all set, Brian, whenever you're ready. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Brian Heath. This is a meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I just wanted to, as you can see, it is a, uh, a Zoom meeting. Uh, the meeting uh, will be participated via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No in-person attendance of uh, members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can uh, adequately access the proceedings in real time. This meeting is being recorded and will, within 48 hours, be posted on a, a link that, to the town's website. Again, I'm Brian Heath, Chairman. We have uh, Jerry Chipman, Vice Chairman, uh, Anna Klimas member, and uh, our newest member, Dan Greenberg. Uh, the meeting, uh, during this meeting, all votes of the board will be taken as uh, roll call votes. In addition to the uh, board members, we have uh, Jennifer Du Bois Brain. Can I just go with Burke? Sure. Jennifer Burke, uh, <laughs> Community and Economic Development Director. Steve Solari, our Building Commissioner. Uh, Nicole Salvo, the Executive Assistant. So at this time, everybody's mic is muted. The board's mic will be the board's mics will be unmuted uh, throughout the whole meeting and as items appear on the agenda uh, the project representatives mics will be unmuted if the project is a public hearing and allows for public comment we ask that you use the chat feature to ask your questions by listing your name address and your question uh, the chair will recognize all questions in in, in order uh, you, you can also uh, use the raise your hand feature in the participant menu and you'll be unmuted when the chair recognizes you. Again, please state your name and address before asking your question. If you're on the phone, you can use the star nine to raise your hand and, and be recognized in that fashion. With that, we will start our meeting. We have um, two items on the agenda. One is a public meeting, the other isn't. So we're going to go with a, there's a variance request for 80 Cedar Crest Drive. Uh, the applicant, Charles Giacchetto, uh, who will be presenting for this application. It's a, it's an app, uh, it's an application for a variance under section 8.4 of the zoning bylaws. It's uh, looking for a, a deviation. I believe it's uh, about 9.7 feet in relation to a 30 foot setback. I'm not sure who's presenting, but the Mr. Giacchetto uh, doesn't have a microphone, uh, doesn't appear. So I'm not sure if he's on a phone number. Uh, Glenn or, oh. or May, Lindsay, are, are you here that you would present? You can, um, if someone wants to write in the chat who's presenting, I can unmute them or I don't know. It's, there's a lot of cell phone numbers and a lot of um, iPads. I think I just unmuted May. I got. I, I, I'm May Lindsay, or Mary Ann Lindsay. I'm, I'm wondering if Chuck didn't unmute his um, microphone. Uh, yes. Oh, I, it looks like he is. Yep. Sorry. I, I'm a good builder, but I'm not really good with computers. <laughs> yeah, my name is Chuck. Okay, thank you. Zoom. Okay, now. I am here now. Okay. All right, uh, Chuck. If you want to uh, walk us through the um, the request. Sure. Um, I, again, my name is uh, Chuck Chiquetto. I, I work with uh, May Lindsay at By Design Construction. Uh, and I'm helping both May and Glenn uh, with this uh, petition for variance. I also am doing the rebuilding of their house. Both May and Glenn, I think, are present here tonight, although I can't see them. <laughs> On October 29th, 2021, they had a uh, fire in their house. Started in the kitchen, um, and they received extensive smoke damage. Um, they also lost three dogs in the process. 
The structure of the house is sound, uh, but the interior had to be stripped to the studs, sealed to remediate the smoke and rebuild the entire inside of the house. And we're in process, we have a building permit and we're in process of doing that now. Um, the existing house, and this I'm, I'm, I'm almost done here. The existing house has a four by four deck off the back with a stairway to the, to the ground. It's basically a fire escape. Um, and what we're requesting here is to expand that four feet away from the house to 10 foot um, wide out to the rear yard uh, by 20 feet. Uh, and the 20 feet would be along the, the inside, the, the side of the house, but just 10 foot, an additional six foot towards the rear yard. The, do, the new deck would be uh, effectively 21.3 feet from the rear yard. Um, you know, the hardship as I see it um, is the slope of the backyard, uh, which is basically unusable and the, the unique shape of, of this lot because of, you know, where it's located at the, uh, the cul-de-sac when they design the subdivision. Um, now, Glenn has spoke to both the abutters to the rear and to the left side um, and both of them have no objection to um, this deck that they're putting in the backyard. The other thing that's that's um, I, I think um, of note is lot nine, which is right behind the house. They built up a a a, a, a berm of of uh, of I, I don't know, it's, it's like a hill, which is a berm that runs the entire length of that lot nine. Uh, which kind of blocks them from the guy, the the abutter to the back. Um, so it's it's this deck is 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 really would not impact um, any of the abutters um, as I see it. Um, and that's just that's just about it. It's it's pretty simple. Um, the house is in process. We'd like to get this approved and 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 um, and so we can build them a little deck off the back and they can enjoy the rest. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Okay, great. Um, uh, any questions from any of the board members? I don't know, uh, Mr. Chairman. I will say though, I, I did look at this on Google Maps, and I, I did I wasn't able to see the berm on lot nine, but I it did look as though there was a fairly significant amount of um, uh, wooded area uh, between lot nine and. Um, the uh, applicant's lot. So um, it, it looks as though it is a pretty private area. So I, I don't see any issue um, with this. And um, I wasn't able to see the slope of the yard as well, but um, based on that, um, I, don't, I don't have any issue with it. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, looking at the lot, it's kind of a strange lot. And I yeah. do know the area, there is a slope off in the back, so. Um, Anna? Uh, given the fact that they've spoken to the abutters, the shape of the lot and kind of what they're the 9.7, I think it was the request for variance. I don't, I don't see an issue with it. Our newest member, Dan, any questions? <clears throat> well, I also looked at Google Maps and I saw the same thing. It does look like it's a fairly wooded area in between and considering uh, the strange shape of the lot and uh, what seems to be uh, a fairly unusable area behind it. I have no objections as well. Okay. Um, would anybody like to make a motion? Uh, it's a public hearing, Brian. Oh, wait, uh, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have anybody out in the public with comments or questions? If so, uh, if you could use one of the chats. Uh, yep, yeah, we have one person here. Um, it's a phone numbering ending in 0023 if you want to unmute yourself. Hello, can everybody hear me? This is Glenn Lindsay. Yep. Um, I did that prior. I thought you wanted me unmuted earlier in the meeting. But uh, yes, no. I could just say that berm is quite high and the abutter has large abovides that are evergreen um and when i spoke to them personally they had no issue thank you okay 
Um, I don't see anybody else. Nicole, do you have anybody in your chat? No. Okay. I don't see anybody else, Brian. All right. To make a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a motion on the um, request for variance as presented. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion um, to um, approve uh, based on the fact that there really doesn't appear to be any um, detriment to the public good. Um, it appears the abutters are in favor and uh, based on the, the odd shape of the lot and the uh, buffering between the rear lot that would most be affected in any way by the deck, um, I think that uh, this uh, approval would be in order. Okay. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The uh, motion has passed. Good luck. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Just a reminder that um, we have 14 days to do the decision, and then there's a, a 30 day, uh, I'm sorry, 20 day appeal period. And so you can't get your building permit until after all of that has been exhausted. Again, thank you. All You're right. Welcome. All right. Right now, that, that closes the uh, public hearing portion of our meeting tonight. So we're going to be moving on to a closed session, correct, Ms. Jennifer? Yeah, I mean, it's not a, it's a public meeting. People can stay and watch, but there's no public oh, input okay. other than the um, developer for the right. next item on the agenda. All right, so the second item on the agenda tonight, it's a um, carryover for the uh, 40B Pratt Meadows project. Uh, requesting a uh, modification in relation to a fence. <clears throat> Is the uh, presenter available? Um, I don't know. He sent me a thing. He said he couldn't find the link and I sent it to him. We have an iPhone and an iPad. If either one of those are Jeff Cutter, can you unmute yourself? I don't, he's no one's unmuting, so. Did you, did you just text him? Did you even give him a call? I'll message him again. I don't have his phone number, but I will email him again. I don't think I have his phone number. Yeah, I only have an email. Okay, I mean, he kind of knew this was tonight, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, he sent me an email at 714 saying, or no, oh, wait, here he is. Hold on. I cannot unmute. Okay, well, which, oh, I don't know which one you are. Um, Got a little technology. <laughs> Don't play the technology. Well, I will admit, Jen, the uh, the the town website does not have a link on it. That's I'm how on my, I got on. That's how I got really? on. Oh, because my, my computer doesn't have a, if you go on just the regular town website, it doesn't have a link to get on to this meeting. So that's why I'm on the phone. Yeah, I went through the calendar. It, yeah, if you go through if you, the calendar. If you go through the calendar, you can do it. But if you're, if you're coming out from um, not in the calendar, it's, you can't get through the computer. There's no link on it to get to this Zoom meeting. That, yeah, they don't do that anymore because there's a new system. Oh, they don't? No, there's okay. a new system. You have to go through the calendar. 
that was um the new system when when Josh took over. He's on. He, I'm just trying to figure out which what he is. What, how do I mute him? Hold on one second. He is on. Got him, Jeff. He says he can hear everything we're saying, so that's a good sign. He's, I, I just don't know if he, it doesn't matter. I'll just, I, I'll unmute both of them. And you have to sing to entertain us. That's the, that happens when you're the newest member. Well, <laughs> try unmuting yourself now, Jeff. Try unmuting yourself now. And he's on a computer or is he on a cell phone? I don't I don't know. That's the, the miscommunication. I don't know if he's on an iPhone or an iPad. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I, I my apologies to the board. I'm on a cell phone and I couldn't get off mute. You wouldn't let me. Okay. <laughs> well, you're here now. Here now. Okay. Yes, I, I can. I've heard everything you've said, so I'm here and fire away. All right, uh, Jeff, as, as, if you can remember from the last call, we were just somewhat concerned on in relation to conversations having uh, been had with the abutters to make sure they understood um, <clears throat> what was going on. And so at this point, I just say, I'd like to ask, uh, you know, what you have done since the meeting and who you've spoken with and what kind of impact you, you've heard from these people. Yes, sir. Um, so I have spoken to each and every abutter um, and I'll go through them one by one. Um, 688 Plymouth Street is the house that is, uh, we refer to as rented to the college students. There's eight cars there. Um, and the uh, I did speak to Russ, who is one of the owners. He was mowing the lawn and on a Sunday, and I was out there, and I I told him what what we were um, proposing, which was that we put all the arborvitae trees up, and we were um, having challenges putting up the fence, and he was um, fine with that. Um, I did speak to. Um, uh, 694 Plymouth, and that's um, she's been there the longest. She's probably been there for 50 years, and she did not. She did actually not want a fence there. Um, and then on lots 18 and 21, which are 40B housing, um, we do not have um, owners of those homes, so they could not be contacted. We did contact lots 19, 20, 22, and 23, um, and, uh, which look over across Brettway at, at, at the fence or proposed fence. And uh, they were fine with it. Um, in fact, most of them were opposed just because in this development, they're pretty conscious of having responsibilities and they realized that a fence there in the winter, the snow might actually be cause them to maintain it. Um, in addition to uh, verbal communication with each and all of these properties, we also sent a certified letter to 688 um, because it's uh, a rental property. And we emailed all the other properties um, to let them know what we were doing and if they had any questions or concerns to reach out to the town of Bridgewater and specifically Nicole. Um, so I, I'm not aware, I wouldn't know if 
Nicole would know if anyone has reached out to her and uh, expressing any concerns. Okay. Uh, do any of the board members at this point have any question, additional questions to uh, Mr. Carter? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have any questions. As I had mentioned earlier, I took a ride down there and I, I, I actually liked the uh, Arborvitaes and I understand the situation better having seen it. And um, I have no issue with it at all, especially because um, he has also gone to the effort to contact everyone as we had asked. Yeah, the same as Jerry. I also went down, drove past there. It, uh, you have a better sense when you're there in person. And um, I think it was my request to have him speak to all the abutters. And um, I think it was a joint request, but yeah, I'm satisfied that now that he's done so. Okay. Dan, anything? Uh, I don't believe so, but where this is a continuance, I don't know if I'm part of this. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, you can't vote on it, but you can, you can vote, certainly but you can ask questions if you, you have questions. questions. No, I'm, I'm satisfied. I think it, it looks good to me. Um, I haven't physically been down there, but from what I can tell from the plans and the photos, that looks sufficient to me. Yeah. Okay. Can we have a... Uh, so... Really, we want a, uh, a vote as to determining that this is insubstantial, the change. Yes. And so if, if someone would make And then, then to approve the change once you determine if it's insubstantial. Right. So I, I would make a, a motion that um, I find the changes to be insubstantial, uh, Mr. Chairman. Can we have a second? I would second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion passes in relation to this being an insubstantial change. Now I'd request a, um, a motion to approve the changes as requested. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the, the motions have passed. We've determined it's insubstantial. Granted the request to not put the fence up, but I, I would ask as part of this um, finding that you at, at some point in the future provide a, a new set of plans, a plan of record, so that we have a, you know, a, a, a plan on record with the changes shown. Uh, yes, is it is it chairman? I apologize. Yes. Uh, uh, so we are getting to the end of uh, towards the end of the project. We anticipate hopefully having everything done in the spring. So we are working on a um, as built as built uh, as. as built, and in that as built, we will um, notate that the uh, planting plan as designed by Meridian was followed with the exception of the fence, which we requested the, the um, modification. And so that would be in the um, final as, as built. Sounds good. Okay. Mr. Chairman, before everybody runs away and before Jeff runs away, um, I, Steve and I wanted to just bring up one other um, issue that has come up in the last day or two. Um, and I don't know if Jeff wants to address, it appears that there's um, propane tanks now being installed that weren't part of the original plan. And I don't know if Jeff intends to bring that before the board as a modification. Uh, I actually don't. So I don't intend to bring it as a modification because it is not our intention to do propane tanks. This is a temporary solution for um, a, a buyer um, who was trying to get in, where are we, November 5th? She was trying to get in at the end of last month. And um, so we did it temporarily. This is something we also did do in phase one. Um, what we're having a problem with, and, and, and just to, as a, 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 to extend that a, a, a thought, um, Clearly, well, clearly, we're all aware that mortgage rates have gone somewhere between uh, gone from three percent January first to seven percent now. So, um, these people 
we were sympathetic to the possibility of them losing their mortgage lock. Again, we did do temporary. Um, and the struggle right now we're having is that the final transition from Columbia Gas to Eversource took place as best I can tell this last summer. And they have wiped all the records clean in the computer. Um, again, this our original documents with them was 2015. Um, so we're having difficulty getting gas. Um, we're in communication with, with Eversource. It's our full intention to have underground utilities and gas going to the final four units. Um, and we do only have the temporary propane on this one unit right now. It is um, um, plastered, so it's important that we have heat in there um, so that the plaster doesn't break. And that was um, the call that we made, but it is not our intention to go with propane on a permanent basis. And it's, a, I'm assuming it's an above ground tank. I, I, Steve went out there and he talked to the fire department. I don't know, Steve, if you want to say anything. Yeah, the, the, the house that it has right now, the house is, it looks like they have like two 200, 250 pound tanks next to each other above ground. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. The, I, I believe, and Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, the fire department was under the impression that they were permanent. Well, he had told me there was four. He was going to be inspecting oh. four tanks. Is uh, there is there another house getting two tanks? Um, I'm just having a little trouble hearing you, Steve. I, what was your question? Uh, is it just these two tanks, or are there another two tanks going in another home? Right now, there's just two tanks. I mean, our our, our uh, we're in touch with um, Daniel Curtin over at Eversource, and we're trying very hard to get gas um, for the other homes. Um, that other home is not plastered now, so it wasn't, in my mind, some such an emergency. Um, so it's not our intention to do propane there. Um, okay. Keep in mind that it is a big, um, how do I say it, uh, delicately, pain in the neck for us to do it because we're actually spending a lot of money to bring propane in and take it out and do all the conversions mm. over a short period of time. It's yeah, I know. We want to. Yeah. I just, um, I, I fire, asked because the fire, fire department, I thought said they were putting four tanks, that they had permits for four tanks. That's why there might be a miscommunication. That's all. Uh, no, Steve, we are not doing, this is right now, this is the only house that we have signed up to do propane tanks. Okay. And again, it was trying to get it closed, uh, trying to get them in. Um, as it is, they did not make the deadline. Uh, they're trying to get a new mortgage, but um, no, we're, we're trying actively to get gas. I mean, we know, I, I did speak to Jen about this um, and I did read once again, I review them occasionally, the comprehensive permit. And it clearly does state that um, utilities should be underground, and we are we have every intention to abide by that. I'm, I'm assuming you got a loop, a gas loop in there already. That it's just an extension off of the existing that was in there. So the way it has worked on each of the 56 lots is that the gas is stubbed to either the edge of the property or on the other side of the, in this case on Brett Way, as we've talked about with the fence, the gas main is under the opposite side of Brett Way. And when the gas company tells me they're coming, we then dig from the home as close to the main as we can with, you know, 18 inches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's a, it's a, um, developer dig and they just connect to the main mm, all right. we are struggling to get them to come out and give us gas period well good luck <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not the first time and i'm used to it but it's just i mean you know um 
we'll get it done. I mean, it's it is what it is. Um, but it wasn't bad meantime, when, when it was seventy degrees weather, but now you're in the forties. Yeah, and we've got to, we've got to have heat in there, and 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 you know, again, it actually hasn't been a big issue the last five years because mortgage rates kept going lower, but now. <sighs> You know, now people are at risk of losing the house because the jump from three to seven percent is rather dramatic. It's a double your so, mortgage payment. Yeah, so that's that is what we did, um, and uh, I honestly cannot tell you where it goes from here. I, I, my guess at this point is if if they do not get us gas within, based on the weather that's coming within the next, I don't know, six weeks. I don't think we'll be able to get through the frost until the spring. So I would guess that those propane tanks would be there till the spring. But again, we did do this on phase one on I think one or two houses. We then took the propane tanks out and we got the gas in and it's just, uh, uh, you know, doing what we have to do. Okay. Right. Thanks, Jeff. We just wanted to clarify because I, you and I did talk about it and we did talk about it being a temporary fix, but then when we heard yep. it was a permanent fix, that's why we got confused. So no. that's why I just wanted to mention no. it. It is absolutely not a permanent fix. I can assure you of that. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Great. You're welcome. All right. So this is your last meeting, huh, Jen? It is my last meeting. It's been wonderful working with all of you. Dan, I'm sorry we didn't get to work more together. Um, like ships in the night. That's okay. I know. <laughs> but I'll be uh, thinking of you all while I'm sitting on the beach. So. Best of luck, Jen. Thank you so Good much. Luck, Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck, Jen. Enjoy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great, but I'll be sad to miss to leave Bridgewater. It's just, we're just, I feel like we're just getting a groove to get some good things going here. And, but hopefully the next person will pick up right where I left off. So. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Dan, pleasure meeting you. All right. Nice to meet everyone. Good luck, Dan. All right. Take care, Everybody guys. have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Do I need to stop the recording? Oh yeah, I'm gonna stop the recording, sorry. All right, just stop.